So it contains one one zero one as an initial subsequence and as a final subsequence. So each time that we receive this, the output will be equal to one, and next time here the output will be equal to one. So both of them will be detected, and here we have an overlap between them, which is still okay. So the one in the middle again is in both of the subsequences. And the, sub, the sequence 1101 1, must be recognized each time that it occurs in the input sequence, regardless of its position. So let's start uh, designing it. First, we define the states for the sequence to be recognized. We assume that it starts with first symbol received. And it continues through each symbol in the sequence to be recognized. And the output will be equal to 1 to mean that the full sequence has occurred, otherwise the output will be equal to 0. So as already described, we start with a state, which is called the initial state or reset state, whatever we call, you, you want to call it. We call it A, and it means that none of the sequence is occurred. So we haven't received any part of the sequence. And then we assume that the first one, the first element of the sequence is received, which is one here. So we switch to the next state, which is B, and the output will be equal to zero because we haven't received the whole sequence yet. So A here means that none of sequence is received. B means that first element of sequence is received and then we can see that we can say that now that we are in b we assume that another one is received as the input and therefore the output will be still equal to zero because we haven't received the whole sequence we will switch to state c and state c here means that first two elements elements of the sequence are received so we are we have received one we have received the second one now if we receive a zero we will switch to another state i call it d we receive zero the output is still equal to zero and d means that first three elements of the sequence are received and if now we receive a 1, if we receive a 1, it means that the sequence, we are in D and we receive 1, it means that the whole sequence is received successfully and we have the output equal to 1 as well. Now we need to determine where to, which state to transit in the D from D. So one thing to consider here is that the last one that we receive could be itself the start of the next sequence. So we, we receive the one here, the output becomes one, but then we can say, say that this one that we have received as the input could be considered again as the first element of the sequence. So in, instead of going to A, we will switch to B. If we receive a 1 and 0 and 1 again, so the output will become 1 and so on and so forth. So everything that I draw over there is also explained here in the slides. You can follow them. We have state A, B, C, D. When we, we are in DM, we receive 1 here. The output becomes equal to 1, meaning that the whole sequence is received. And then from D, we can move to the state B. Something to pay attention here is that we have a MIDI model here, meaning that the output depends on the state and the input. Later we will see that we can have the Moore model and in that case the situation will be a little bit different. So from D, as I already explained, we can switch to B, to state B. And at state B, we assume that the first element of the sequence is received. So we can transit to B from A or from D. 
in both cases and then the the, the sequence detector indeed will continue. All right, so we have A, B, C, and D as the states. Here you have, you, you can see the meaning for the states. I already have explained them. A means that no proper subsequence has occurred. B means that the first element, which is one, has occurred. C means that the first two elements occurred. D means that the first three elements have occurred. And then once we are in D and receive one, the output will become one and it means that the whole sequence has occurred. So you can see that the one slash one on the arc from D to B, this one here, means that the last one has occurred and thus the sequence is recognized and that last one could be considered as the first one of the sequence again. All right, now that we have kind of constructed the state diagram here, we need to complete it. So this state diagram is not complete because we have included only some of the inputs. So for, indeed for each state, we have included only a single value for the input, but not the other one. So for example, if we are in A and receive a zero as the input, if we receive zero as the input, the output will be equal to zero and we will remain at A because we haven't received any part of the sequence. If we are in B, meaning that we have received the first one and then we receive a zero, one zero is not a proper subsequence of the sequence, therefore we will switch back to A. If we receive zero, the output will be zero, we switch back to A. If we are in C, so for B we are done, if we are in C and then we receive one, okay? So once we are in C, it means that we have received one and one till now, if we receive another one here, so we, we need to stay in the state C, okay? because it means that we the, the last two ones will be considered in it, and it means that we are waiting for the zero. So if we receive one here, the output will be equal to zero, and we will stay in state C. And finally, if we are in state D and we receive a zero as the input, it means that we had one, one, zero till now, and then if we receive a zero, one, one, zero, it means that we should move back to state A because one, one, zero, zero is not a subsequence, and it means that we haven't received any part of the sequence yet. So with zero, the output will be zero, and we will go back to A. Now we can say that our state diagram is complete. And once it is complete, we will be ready to, you can see it here as well, we will be ready to form a state table for it and then construct the circuit diagram. All right, so here we have the state diagram shown and now we want to form a state table. We have four states here, A, B, C, and D. These are the present states. For the next states, we have constructed the state table in this form. We consider the two values for x, whether x is equal to 0 or 1, and for the output as well. Whether x is equal to 0 or 1, we just need to fill it by referring to the state diagram here. The first row is filled for a. If we are in a and we receive 0 as the input, the next state is a. If we receive 1 as, in as the input, the next state is b and the output is, for in both cases, is equal to zero. Let's fill it together. So if we are in state B and we receive zero as the input, we will switch back to A, the output will be equal to zero. If we are in B and we receive one as the input, the next state will be C, the output will be equal to zero. If we are in C and receive zero, we will go to D, the output is zero. If we are in C and we receive one, we will remain at C and the output will be equal to zero. If we are in D and we receive zero as the input, we will go to A, the output is zero. And if we receive one, we will go to C and the output is equal to one. So in this way, we can fill the state table. And once we have the state table, we can find out the 
expressions for the input of the Philip Phillips referring to the next state and also for the outputs. And you can see it again here as well. So this, this is what we had for the MIDI model. Now we can think about the Moore model before, before moving forward and constructing the circuit. So let's see how the Moore model for this sequence uh, detector will look like. For the Moore model, the outputs will be associated with the states only, not with the inputs. So in this case, we would need to add a new state, which is E, with the output value equal to 1 for the final one in the recognized input sequence. This new state E will be similar to state B, but it will generate an output of 1 instead of the output which is equal to 0 for the state B that we had. And we, we will see that the more model for a sequence recognizer will usually have uh, more states than the MIDI model. So here we have the more model. You can see that for once we are in state A, the output is always equal to 0. For state B, it's equal to 0. For C, it's also equal to 0. For D, it's equal to 0. And only for the state E here, the output is equal to 1. Since state E is similar to state B, if we receive 1 at any of those states, we will switch to, Z to C, and if we receive 0, we will switch to A. So you can see that they are quite similar to each other. And now that we have the more model, the outputs are marked on the states, and you can see them again here, so not on the arcs. Arcs now only show the input values. So if you compare this with the MIDI model, you can see that here we have an additional state. So the the number of the Philip Phillips that are required would be indeed bigger in this case. So the new state E here produces the same behavior in the future as a state B. It gives a different output at the present time. So these states do represent a different abstraction of the input history. All right, so let's see how the state table for the Moore model will look like. Now we have five states, A, B, C, D, and E for the present state. The state table is filled already. You can just uh, double check it with the state diagram that we have. The next state and the outputs are filled according to the table. The next step is to assign the states. So we have the state assignment here. We have the example one. The, there are two states A and B. We have one input X, which could be equal to zero or one, and there is a single output which could be determined. So a state table is provided for us in detail. We have two states. For these two states, we can determine the number of the bits that is required. We can do this. So a single bit indeed will work here. So the single Philip Philip will do the job for us. The minimum number of the bits is equal to one. We can say that A equal to zero and B is equal to one. We assign it in this way or assign A equal to one and B equal to zero. So there will be indeed no difference. We can use any of the two that you want to have. Here we have another example for the state assignment. There are four number of the states. The minimum number of the bits will be equal to two. So we would need to use at least two Philip Phillips. And we will use the D type Philip Phillips in this case. And then assign the, the different values to the bits to each of the states. There are different ways to do this. One way is to use the counting order assignment. For A, we can use 0, 0. For B, 0, 1. For C, 1, 0. And for D, 1, 1. And you can see that the resulting coded state table. The present state is A, B, C, and D. The next state and the outputs are shown here. And then referring to this, we can obtain the, the input expressions for the Philip Phillips and also for the output. So we will find the Philip Phillips input and output equations. We assume that we are using D Philip Phillips. We are using the counting order assignment. There are two Philip Phillips needed to represent four states. 
And here you can, I think you can go through these K maps on your own and find the inputs to the D1, D2, and Z using the K maps. It, they are quite straightforward. We can do the two level optimization. So for D1, we have found A not B or X not AB. And for D2, we have not X A not B or X not A not B or X AB. And for Z, we have X A not B. And the gate input cost is equal to 22. The next way that we can do is for the state assignment is using the gray code instead of the counting order. So now A is equal to 0, 0, B is equal to 0, 1, C is equal to 1, 1, and D is equal to 1, 0. These two are different, yeah? And we have the resulting coded state table shown here, A, B, C, and D. And referring to this state table, we can find, we can form the K maps and find the expression for D1, D2, and Z. And here we have the values. So D1 will be equal to A, B, or X, B. D2 will be equal to X, and Z is equal to X, A, and not B. And now the gate input cost is equal to 9 compared to 22. So in this example, in this case, the gray code assignment works better than the counting order assignment. So depending on the problem, one might be better than the other. And here we have the the implementation of the circuit referring to the expressions that we have here d for d1 d2 and z it's quite straightforward initially it's indeed uh, implemented using the and and or gates but we can do the mapping to the nand gates with up to four inputs and inverters and implement it again and you can see here the implementation using the nand gates so the technology mapping is also applied here and we have the sequential circuit designed. Now we can verify it by providing the specific input sequences to X and then determine finding out the value for Z. Whenever the specified sequence is recognized, the output should be equal to one, otherwise it would be equal to zero. All right, so I think that's all for this video. In the next video lecture, we will continue discussing about the sequential circuit design and we will have other examples. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video later. Bye for now.